Would you please stand and turn to face the back? Dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night, when the Lord Jesus Christ passed from death to life, the Church invites her children throughout the world to come together in vigil and prayer. This is the Passover of the Lord, when we venerate him in his death and resurrection. Through the celebration of the Paschal mystery in word and sacrament, he renews our faith and hope and gives us a share in his victory over death and his eternal life with the Father. Father, we share in the light of your glory through your Son, the light of the world. Sanctify this new fire and inflame us with new hope. Purify our minds by this Easter celebration and bring us to the feast of eternal light. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha, the Omega, all times belong to him and all the ages. To him be glory and power through every age forever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ our Lord guard us and keep us. Amen. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. Light the candles. Light the candles.
Christ our light. Thanks be to God. Christ our light. Thanks be to God. Christ our light. Thanks be to God. Rejoice, heavenly powers, sing choirs of angels, exalt all creation around God's throne. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. Sound the trumpet of salvation. Rejoice, O earth, in shining splendor, Radiant in the brightness of your King, Christ has conquered, glory fills you, darkness vanishes forever. Rejoice, O Mother Church, exult in glory, the risen Saviour shines upon you. Let this place resound with joy, echoing the mighty song of all God's people. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right that with full hearts and minds and voices we should praise the unseen God, our all-powerful Father, and his only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For Christ has ransomed us with his blood and paid for us the price of Adam's sin to our eternal Father. This is our Passover feast, when Christ the true Lamb is slain, whose blood consecrates the homes of all believers. This is the night when first you saved our fathers, you freed the people of Israel from their slavery and led them dry shod through the sea. This is the night when Christians everywhere washed clean of sin and freed from all defilement are restored to grace and grow together in holiness. This is the night when Jesus Christ broke the chains of death and rose triumphant from the grave. Father, how wonderful your care for us how boundless your merciful love to ransom a slave you gave away your son. Oh, happy fault, O oh, necessary sin of Adam, which gained for us so great a redeemer. The power of this holy night dispels all evil, washes guilt away, restores lost innocence, brings mourners joy. Night truly blessed, when heaven is wedded to earth, and man is reconciled with God. Therefore, Heavenly Father, in the joy of this night, 
Receive our evening sacrifice of praise, your church's solemn offering. Accept this Easter candle, may it always dispel the darkness of this night. May the morning star which never sets find this flame still burning. Christ, that morning star, who came back from the dead and shed his peaceful light on all mankind, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, we have begun our solemn vigil. Let us now listen attentively to the word of God, recalling how again and again he saved his people and in the fullness of time sent his Son to be our Redeemer. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 2, reading from verses 4 to 9. This story tells how God created Adam. Tonight we celebrate our new creation in Jesus Christ, who breathes the Holy Spirit upon us. This is the account of how the heavens and the earth, when they were created, when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Now no shrub had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth, and there was no one to work the ground. But streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Hear the word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Psalm 33. The word of the Lord is faithful, and all his works to be trusted. The Lord loves justice and right, and fills the earth with his love. The, the Lord, Lord fills, fills the, the earth, earth with, with his, his love. love. By his word the heavens were made. By the breath of his mouth all the stars. He collects the waves from the ocean. He stores up the depths of the sea. The, the Lord, Lord fills, fills the earth, earth with, with his love. They are happy whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his own. From the heavens the Lord looks forth. He sees all the children of men. The, the Lord, Lord fills, fills the, the earth with, with his love. Our soul is waiting for the Lord. The Lord is our help and our shield. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. The, the Lord, Lord fills, fills the earth, earth with his love. Let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created and still more wonderfully redeemed us. Bring us to those lasting joys which you have prepared for us through the sacrifice of Christ our Passover, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
the second reading from Genesis chapter 3. This story witnesses to the common human experience of separation from God through disobedience and hints at redemption through a descendant of the woman. Now the snake was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the snake, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. You will not certainly die, the snake said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree from which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the snake deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the snake, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. To the woman he said, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labor you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. To Adam he said, because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground since from it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Psalm 32. Happy the one whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is covered. Happy the one to whom the Lord imputes no guilt and in whose spirit there is no guile. Forgive, Forgive me, me, Lord, Lord the, the guilt, guilt of, of my sin. sin. Then I acknowledge my sin to you and, in my, and my iniquity I did not hide. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Forgive, Forgive me, me, Lord, Lord the, the guilt, guilt of, of my, my sin. sin. Great tribulations remain for the wicked, but mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy, all you who are true of heart. Forgive, Forgive me, Lord, Lord the, the guilt, guilt of, of my sin. sin. Let us pray. 
Almighty Father, you sent your Son into the world to set us free from sin. Enable us to withstand temptation and to be able in your presence, to, to abide in your presence through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. During their escape from Egypt, God led the Israelites safely through the waters of the Red Sea, in which the pursuing Egyptians were destroyed, foreshadowing our own deliverance through the waters of baptism. A reading from Exodus chapter 14, verse 15, to chapter 15, verse 1. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. Then the angel of God, who had been travelling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to the one side and light to the other. So neither went near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them, and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He jammed the wheels of their chariots so that they had difficulty in driving. And the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at daybreak the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing towards it and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not one of them survived. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground, with a wall of water on their right and on their left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians, and the Israelites saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, glorious his triumph. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength, my song, my salvation. This is my God, and I extol him, my Father's God, and I give him praise. I will, I will sing, sing to, to the Lord, Lord. glorious is his, his triumph. triumph. The Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh he hurled into the sea. The flower of his army is drowned in the sea. 
The deeps hid them. They sank like a stone. I will sing sing to to the the Lord. Lord. Glorious Glorious is his triumph. Your right hand, Lord, glorious in its power. Your right hand, Lord, has shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your glory, you crushed the foe. I will will sing sing to to the the Lord. Lord. Glorious Glorious his triumph. You will lead your people and plant them on your mountain. The place, O Lord, where you have made your home, the sanctuary, Lord, which your hands have made. The Lord will reign forever and ever. I will will sing sing to to the the Lord, Lord, glorious glorious his triumph. Let us pray. Lord God, you made the Red Sea a symbol of our baptism and the nation you redeemed a sign of your Christian people. Grant that people of every nation may come to the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit and share by faith in the privilege of Israel. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The fourth reading is from Ezekiel, um, chapter 36, verses 22 to 28. God promised to purify the people of Israel, to renew them in heart and spirit, and to make them his own people. God did did this not only for their own sake, but that through them the world might come to know him. Therefore, say to the Israelites, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. It is not for your sake, people of Israel, that I am going to do these things, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations where you have gone. I will show the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, the name you have profaned among them. Then the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Sovereign Lord when I am proved holy through you before their eyes. For I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from the countries and bring you back into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Then you will live in the land I gave your ancestors. You will be my people and I will be your God. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Truly God is my salvation. I trust, I shall not fear. For the Lord is my strength, my song. He became my savior. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord. Give praise to his name. Make his mighty deeds known to the peoples. Declare the greatness of his name. With joy you you will draw water water from from the wells wells of salvation. salvation. Sing a psalm to the Lord, for he has done glorious deeds. Make them known to all the earth. People of Zion, sing and shout for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Let us pray. 
Almighty Father, you have chosen us to be your people. Take away our hearts of stone and give us hearts of flesh that your holiness may be revealed in us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, you have brightened this night with the radiance of the risen Christ. May his light so shine within the church that we may be renewed in mind and body and serve you with all our being. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 6, verses 3 to 11. Don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the death through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim that his mercy endures forever. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter, beginning at verse 1. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? 
When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Please sit. We have just come through the most solemn and dramatic and spiritually enriching week in the whole Christian year. Last Sunday, Palm Sunday, we were participants at Jesus' approach and entry into Jerusalem. We were with the crowds. We were shouting hosannas, proclaiming him as our king, and looking forward to great things. We walked through the remaining days of the week. We went with Jesus and his disciples into the upper room on Thursday evening. We were participants in that intimate meal which he shared with them and which he shared with us, where he gave us bread and wine and revealed to us that this was his body and his blood and that in this way, whenever we eat and drink, we have his presence with us. We sat back in amazement and allowed him to wash our feet, demonstrating to us an act of humility which we were then to emulate as we go out into the world and preparing the way for the greater act of humility the following day when he would die on the cross for us and for our salvation. We've walked through those events. We've not read them as interested observers reading about something that happened a long time ago, but we walked through those things as participants. We were there in Jerusalem shouting Hosanna. We were there in the upper room receiving the body and blood of the Lord and allowing him to wash our feet. We were there at the foot of the cross with Mary and the beloved disciple. We watched the Lord die and we saw him buried in the tomb. It all comes to a dramatic conclusion today because today we have gone with the women to the place where Jesus was buried and we have found the tomb to be empty. And it's right that we should come to a dramatic conclusion today after all that we've been through, all the different emotions of the week. Today, surely, is a moment for drama and triumph. We have read Mark's account of the resurrection. So how exactly does Mark give us this moment of triumph, this moment of drama? The women who went to the tomb and heard the message that Jesus had risen, ran away and told nobody because they were too afraid. Hmm. It doesn't sound quite the way we want it to sound, does it? We want drama. We want amazing things happening. We want to see the risen Jesus, but no. Mark ends this account of the resurrection and, in fact, his whole gospel on this note, this, surely this anticlimax, this very unsatisfactory way of bringing things to a triumphant conclusion, the women, the first to hear the news that Jesus had risen, ran away and told nobody about it because they were afraid. Hmm. <laughs> what are we to make of it? It's very different from the other gospel accounts. The, it's basically the same event that he's narrating, there are similarities there, but he tells it in such a seemingly unsatisfactory way. 
After all, if you read Matthew, which we did last year, then we have drama, we have a thunderclap, we have an angel in white, a shining angel sitting on the stone, and it rolls away in front of their eyes, and they can see that it, the tomb is empty. They run back joyfully to tell the disciples, and on their way back, these women meet the risen Jesus. That's how it should be done, surely. Luke tells it slightly differently, but there's still triumph, there's still joy. The women go to the tomb, they see two shining angels this time, and they see that the tomb is empty. They run back and tell the disciples, filled with joy. When they get there, the two of the disciples have gone off to Emmaus. They meet the risen Jesus on the way, and they come back. And by the time they're back, Jesus has appeared to Simon and will appear to all of them later on. Again, that's the way we'd want it to be. John tells it slightly differently. It's clearly the same event, but just told from a different perspective. Mary Magdalene alone goes to the tomb. She alone is the witness to the risen Jesus. And then Jesus, in a series of encounters, reveals himself in different ways and in different places to his disciples. Again, it's great. It's drama. That's how we'd want the whole thing to round off. And in fact, the other gospel writers do round off their whole gospels in a far more satisfying way. Matthew ends with the Great Commission. Jesus gives his disciples the command to go out into all the world, make new disciples, and then he ascends and leaves their sight. That's a good way to finish a gospel. What about Luke? He ends with the ascension as well, prepares the way for chapter 2 in the Acts of the Apostles, where he continues the story. And John concludes his gospel by saying that there wouldn't be enough room in all the world for all the books that would have to be written if everything that Jesus said and did was recorded. So how does Mark end? The women who were the witnesses to the empty tomb were too afraid to tell anybody about it, and they ran away. Hmm. <laughs> I can't stop going, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> And that's because for 2,000 years, commentators and scholars and all Christians have just gone, hmm, when they have read Mark's account. Because it just doesn't seem to be the right way to finish his gospel. It's led to much speculation, as you can imagine. Was it that Mark did originally conclude his gospel in a far more satisfactory way, and the ending was lost? Could it be that he intended to finish it in a more satisfactory way, but he'd nev he never did for some reason? Illness or even death might have prevented him. We don't know. Certainly, if you read Mark's Gospel, you will find there are 12 more verses that go on after that, but those have clearly been added later by somebody else. They're not part of Mark's original account. The earliest manuscript evidence we have of Mark doesn't include those verses. So Mark definitely does end with this note of fear and the inability to share the good news. So what are we to make of it? Well, we don't know, and all that we can say really can only be speculation. There's much scholarly debate, and there always will be. But how about this? Mark began his gospel, the very beginning of it, with these words, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He began his gospel very confidently, telling us, this is Jesus, the Son of God. Throughout the gospel, he shows a picture of Jesus who has come to confront the powers of evil, to drive them away, to conquer them, get rid of them, and to assert God's authority and establish his kingship over everyone and everything. When we come to the end then, and we're seen, we see this picture of the women just running away in fear, perhaps that is saying to us that actually the gospel is only a beginning. He starts the words of his gospel with the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. But perhaps the whole of the gospel is just the beginning, in the sense that the story continues. The other gospel writers rounded off their stories in a nice, neat way. Mark leaves his open. And why? Because the story continues. Mark's readers 
are invited to continue the story of the good news of Jesus Christ. They're not meant to look at this book as a historical book, something that happened a long time ago, but as a story which continues, a story into which they are invited to contribute and be part of. The good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, continues to be told in word and in deed today. We, Mark's modern-day readers, are invited to be part of that story. Mark's gospel has not come to an end because he didn't intend it to. It has not come to an end because we have jumped into the story ourselves, and we are part of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. How do we become part of that? It is through faith and baptism into the life of the risen Jesus. We become part of the story by becoming part of his body. We continue the story which Mark began by being the body of Christ in the world. We as individuals and we as a church. We continue that story. We are the means by which Mark's story is told again and again today to the people around us. Is that what Mark intended us to think? Well, we don't know, but maybe he did. And even if he didn't, I think we're justified in thinking that. We continue the story which Mark began. It is for that reason that today, this morning, at this solemn Easter vigil, we renew our baptism promises. We recommit ourselves to being part of the story. Later on, I'm going to be asking you a series of things. And um, I'm going to be asking you, will you faithfully play your part in the life and fellowship of the church? I will ask you, will you gladly obey the commandments of God and seek to do his will? I will ask you, will you, by your life and witness, share in the church's mission to proclaim the gospel? and to set forward peace and justice among all people. I will ask you those things as part of your renewal of your baptism promises. And I'm hoping you will say yes to those things. With God's help, I will. And if you do, then you are entering in once again to the story which Mark began, but which we continue. Amen. Because of COVID restrictions, we can't do everything in the normal way that we would. We would normally now all gather around the font, and we would uh, bless the water and renew our baptism promises. But we're not going to process to the font. We're going to use the portable font at the front here. And when it comes to the sprinkling with holy water, I will not be sprinkling you. But apart from that, we do everything as we normally would. So please, would you turn to the bottom of page 18 and stand. Dear friends, this water will be used to remind us of our baptism. Let us ask God to bless it and to keep us faithful to the spirit he has given us. Father, you give us grace through sacramental signs which tell us of the wonders of your unseen power. In baptism, we use your gift of water, which you have made a rich symbol of the grace you give us in this sacrament. At the very dawn of creation, your Spirit breathed on the waters, making them the wellspring of all holiness. The waters of the great flood, you made a sign of the waters of baptism that make an end of sin and a new beginning of goodness. Through the waters of the Red Sea, you led Israel out of slavery to be an image of God's holy people, set free from sin by baptism. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. Your son willed that water and blood should flow from his side as he hung upon the cross. After his resurrection, he told his disciples, Go out and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Father, look now with love upon your church 
and unseal for her the fountain of baptism. By the power of the Spirit and through the water of this font, bestow the grace of your Son. You created all people in your own likeness. Cleanse them from sin in a new birth of innocence by water and the Spirit. We ask you, Father, with your Son, to send the Holy Spirit upon the waters of this font. May all who are buried with Christ in the death of baptism rise also with him to newness of life. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, tonight is the night of nights for which we have been preparing during Lent. We have come to know more clearly the love of Christ for us. On Palm Sunday, we went to Jerusalem with him. We followed him day by day until, on Good Friday, we stood at the foot of the cross as he died for us in the fullness of his love. Tonight, we rejoice in that great love. As we celebrate the paschal mystery of his death and resurrection, we remember that at our baptism we were buried with Christ and raised with him to newness of life. The lighted candles we hold remind us that we share in the light of Christ. Let us now show our thankfulness by renewing the solemn pledges that were made then, to renounce the world, the flesh and the devil, to believe the Christian faith, and to keep God's holy will and commandments. I ask you, therefore, do you renounce the wickedness of the world, its greed for possessions, power, and status? Yes, I renounce the world. Do you renounce all that corrupts our human nature, pride, selfishness, and lust? Yes, I renounce the world. Do you renounce the devil, the author of all evil, and the father of lies? Do you believe in God the Father, the maker of all? I believe in Christ. Do you believe in his Son, Jesus Christ, the Redeemer of the world? I believe in Christ. Do you believe in his Holy Spirit, the giver of life? I believe in Christ. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Will you faithfully play your part in the life and fellowship of the church? God's help, I will. Will you gladly obey the commandments of God 
and seek to do his will. With God's help, I will. Will you, by your life and witness, share in the church's mission to proclaim the gospel and to set forward peace and justice among all people? With God's help, I will. Almighty God, who gives you the will to do all these things, grant you also the power to perform them, that he may complete the work which he has begun in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. In the radiant splendor of this holy night, let us cry out to the Lord, whose mighty deeds we have seen in the deliverance of God's people through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. For the people of God, brought through saving waters to a land of promise, may our lives be a song of joy to the Lord, who has triumphed gloriously. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our Bishop Margaret, and all bishops, priests, and deacons, may they lead in faith and serve in love the flock entrusted to their care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all the human race, created in the image and likeness of God, may God place within all people a new heart and a new spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For innocent victims of terror and oppression, may violence be banished and righteousness with prosperity restored. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those newly baptized into the death and resurrection of Christ, may they walk always with Christ in newness of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who feel abandoned in their affliction, may God's great compassion gather them into the care of this community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, whose lifelong vigil for the Lord has ended, may those who have died with Christ also live forever with him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In silence, let us bring our own needs and concerns to God, our loving Father.
Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for, for the sake, sake of your, your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Please stand. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The peace of the risen Christ be with you. Alleluia, alleluia. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his church. Lord of life, with unbounded joy we offer you our sacrifice of praise. As we are fed with the bread of heaven, may we know your resurrection power. Through Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And on this night of our redemption, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, Father, through your Son, Christ our Lord. Through him, accept our offering of thanks and praise. And send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, so that they may be to us his body and his blood. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So too, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given you thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. So we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. 
Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Holy Father, with these your gifts, we, your people, celebrate before you the one perfect sacrifice of Christ our Lord, his rising from the dead and his ascending to the glory of heaven. Gracious Lord, accept us in him, unworthy though we are, so that we who share in the body and blood of your Son may be made one with all your people of this and every age. Grant that as we await the coming of Christ our Saviour in the glory and triumph of his kingdom, we may daily grow into his likeness, with whom and in whom and through whom, by the power of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour be given to you, Almighty Father, by the whole company of earth and heaven, throughout all ages, now and forever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is Jesus, the risen Lord, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who share his feast. Draw near and receive the body of the risen Lord which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving.
Please stand. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. Lord, you have nourished us with your Easter sacrament. Fill us with your spirit and make us one in peace and love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Would you please sit? I usually um, forget something. I usually forget a whole number of things when it comes to this point of the service. One thing that I'm aware that I've forgotten is that I don't have a pew leaflet in front of me, so I can't wish people happy birthday. If, you, if there's anybody with a pew leaflet, please, can I borrow it? <laughs> There's quite a number of birthdays and anniversaries. Uh, today, what a wonderful day to have a birthday. Today uh, is the birthday of Beverly Carine and also Gary Sutton. And I know Gary is going to be five. Um, and during the week, we celebrate the birthdays of Lorraine Wright, Jean Moore, Minnie Brooks. And Minnie is not just a birthday. It's not just a big birthday. It's a huge birthday. Minnie is going to be 100 this week. And she's sitting in the front looking rather embarrassed and bemused by it all. But <laughs> enjoy your 100th birthday. It's a wonderful thing. Not only wonderful that you are achieving 100, but wonderful that you're able to be here and to keep coming to church and to have the love of your family around you as well. So congratulations, Minnie. Thank you for being such a wonderful witness of faith to us in this community. Uh, also, uh, in the, later in the week, we have the birthdays of Christo Devet, Janice Newton, Paul Rice, and Lynn Trimmel. Janice and Lynn are here as well. Um, there's Lynn. I did see yeah, Janice is there. Congratulations to you as well. God's blessing to all of you for your birthdays. It's wonderful to have a birthday during Eastertide. You can genuinely celebrate and not worry about having what you've given up for Lent. Just have plenty of it. We also have a number of anniversaries this week. Uh, Michael and Wendy Edwards, Gavin and Janet Allison, John and Katrina Farrell, and Grant and Fiona Labuschagne. We wish God's blessing to all of them and to everyone who is celebrating the gift of love in their wedding anniversaries this week. Also, very importantly, today uh, is a day for giving thanks not only to God for the resurrection, but to the people of this community. There's been a lot to do in this past week. Lots of people have been involved in, uh, in services, in sidesmen's and COVID's duties, in preparing the church for Easter and for all the different things that have gone on this week. It's been a busy week. It's been a tiring week, but it's been a wonderful week. So I want to thank everybody that has had any involvement whatsoever. Starting last week with the team that made the Palm Crosses and, um, and everyone who's been involved ever since. Thank you all for making this such a wonderful Holy Week. I don't think there's any announcements uh, other than that to make, not that I can think of anyway. Um, services will continue this week as normal, Thursday and then next Sunday at 9. Um, I won't be here. Um, well, I might be here, but I won't be doing anything up here. Um, I'm handing over to Father Tom. The office will be open normal times, Tuesdays, Thursdays and Fridays. So please contact the office if you need to on those days. Is there anything else? I, I keep thinking there's always something else I need to announce or remind you of, but I can't think what it is, so please stand. Oh, I know what it is. <laughs> Happy Easter. <laughs> <laughs> you there was something. <laughs> As we prepare to go out into the world to continue the story of the resurrection, we pray together. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. The Lord be with you. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you 
and remain with you always. With the risen life of Christ within you, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia.
Does anybody have a silver Renault Megane parked on Comicky Road? Just been told they've left their window wound down. I don't know if that's anybody here. Silver Renault Megane. All right. Thank you. 